Hello, this is Donna Lewis again with the Clark County Park District, and today I'm doing a reading in nature about the Majestic Bald Eagle program for the New Carlisle Library in conjunction with us, the Clark County Park District. So today, obviously, we're talking about the Majestic Bald Eagle. Bald eagles are phenomenally in a lot of places now they didn't used to be, and we'll talk about that, why that is. First, we're going to read a book, and it is called Eaglet's World written by Evelyn Minshall and illustrated by Andrea Gabriel. So, Eaglet's World. Where Eaglet was, was cozy. It was dark and damp and warm. Hopefully you can see that, he's in his egg. When Eaglet moved, he touched slippery smoothness. Sometimes he felt movement above, a jostling, a gentle rocking. He heard whirring, quiet murmurs. What could it be? Where could it be? Would he ever go there? He cuddled in dark, warm softness. He didn't want to go anywhere. Not now, not ever. Where he was, was cozy. So he is inside his egg, all tucked in and warm, and doesn't want to leave the egg. But one day, where Eaglet was, was too small. His wings pressed against hard, rough roundness. His beak clicked, click, 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 click. So it was getting too crowded in the nest. I'm gonna try to stand up here a little bit. And I'm losing things. I'm outside and it's a little windy today. Okay. So he's getting a little crowded in his nest and he's trying to peck his way out. Faster and faster, he pecked. He decided to, to discover what lay beyond that familiar smoothness. For where Eaglet was, was too small. So there he is, he's emerging from that egg out into the nest. Where Eaglet was, was safe. The nest was deep and sturdy. Rough twigs made it strong, down made it soft and cuddly. His mother's and father's wings kept him warm. So there he is, now feeling safe in his nest. And he's nice and warm and mom and dad are taking care of him. Sometimes their wings whirred. They lifted off the nest, taking warmth with them. Then Eaglet learned there would soon be food. He opened his beak wide for wriggling insects or soft mushy grubs or small firm fragments of fish. He would stay here forever, forever. Where he was, was warm and safe. So there's mom or dad bringing him some food. Again, mom and dad both help and there she or he is feeding him his food. Where Eaglet was, was becoming crowded. Once the nest had seemed huge, now he felt scrunched between his parents. Sometimes sharp twigs jabbed him. When his mother and father left him alone, he wondered, what was it like beyond the rough rim of the nest? Stretching his neck, he saw blue, blue, blue everywhere, and his parents flying closer. Food, food for him. He didn't need blueness. He'd stay in this nest forever. We'll wait for the train horn forever even though where he was was becoming crowded so now he's starting to feel a little crowded because he's growing so he's starting to feel a little crowded in that nest where eaglet was was frightening his parents had coaxed him to the edge of the nest he didn't like it there he clutched twigs with his talons as the wind rocked him back and forth, back and forth. It was cool and stroking. It ruffled his feathers. What was it, he wondered. He didn't want to know. He wanted the deep, safe, crowded nest. So, mom and dad are trying to get him to fly and it's scaring him a little bit. Can you imagine? You've not flown before and all of a sudden, you have to go out and fly. But his mother kept prodding him gently, spreading his wings. His father moved outward into blueness, then back again. Surely they didn't expect him to follow. 
He didn't want to, he wouldn't. He wouldn't leave the nest. Never, never. So they're like, come on, buddy, you can do it. They're trying to coax him out of that nest. That would be pretty scary. They showed him again how easy it looked for them. Couldn't they see that his wings weren't as wide as theirs? He felt himself wobbling. He'd fall, he just knew it. He didn't want to fly. He wanted things to be as they had been, forever, forever. So he didn't want to go yet, out into the blue, blue sky. His mother nudged him and suddenly he could no longer feel the nest. He screamed for where he was. So there he is, out there in the blue, blue sky. He scrambled into nothing. Oh, where he was was terribly frightening. I'm missing a page. He scrambled into nothingness, but his mother and father were there. Their wings would keep him from falling. He felt cool air beneath his own wings, catching them, lifting them, and surprisingly, where Eaglet was, was wonderful. So, his mother and father were helping him feel better by catching him underneath and helping him learn to fly. That's pretty good parents right there. He saw a wider, deeper blue than he might ever have imagined from within his safe, warm nest. He felt such brightness as he could never have guessed in the dark, damp coziness of the egg. Below him stretched mountains glistening with white, shadowed blue and purple. So then he saw how wonderful it was to fly above everything. And between the mountains spread greenness and a river glinting as it wound among rocks and through deep valleys. Clouds drifted, breezes whispered, wind whistled as it carried Eaglet, his wingtips tilted and soaring. The world was huge and it was all his. He would soar there above it, surprised by its bigness, its color and brightness. Forever, forever, where Eaglet was, look at that. That would be pretty amazing. Like you're in a plane, looking down. Was wonderful. So Eaglet left the nest. The end. So this book is called Eaglet's World, and you can find this at the New Carlisle Library. Now, talking about the eagle. So we're gonna get our eagle that fell on the floor here, ground a minute ago. So the bald eagle. The bald eagle is a raptor. So it hunts for food and it hunts it from the sky. So it's going to catch the food and these talons in the air, sometimes out of the water because they do love to eat fish. So they'll eat fish and small mammals, birds, um, and even dead things carrying along in the woods or along the road. But they're going to hunt their food from the sky and get it with their talons and usually kill it with these strong talons before they eat. So their food is dead before they eat. They also have this really strong, tough beak. They have this curved, really strong beak that can help rip up their food for them to eat. So the eagle is pretty cool because it is our national symbol. It is the bird, the national bird of the United States. And that happened in 1782. Our founding fathers decided with some other people that this was a really cool bird to have for the national bird. It represents freedom for us here in the United States. And because, so they chose it because of its majestic look and it's a large bird, right? Um, it's long life and great strength. So they thought that would be a great symbol for the United States of America. So from 1782 till today, we still have the bald eagle as our symbol of the United States. Now, so the eagle can live up to 28 years. So raptors can often live longer than other birds. So you see a little songbird nest in the background here, a bluebird nest. They're gonna live a lot longer than a bluebird would. Um, their nests, so I'm gonna show you a nest here. This is a little cardinal nest that I found that was not no longer being used. Something must have happened. And so this is a small nest of the cardinal. Well, the bald eagle is gonna make a nest similar to this with much larger twigs. Okay, this weighs about nothing, right? The bald eagle's nest is going to weigh a ton. 
So a ton, it can weigh up to a ton in weight. So you can imagine that a bald eagle has to have a really large tree with some really strong branches to make its nest. It's also going to make its nest more towards water because they love to eat fish and things near the water. So um, the Ohio River, our rivers around here, Mad River, we have five nests in Clark County. So we have the Mad River nearby, Great Miami, Little Miami. So those places are going to be in our area where the bald eagle would be. And further north would be Lake Erie. They'd be, there's more nests around there and down in near the Ohio River down south. So its body, now this is a small, this is stuffed animal, so it's a smaller bald eagle. So 34 to 43 inches in height, okay? But its wingspan is six to eight feet. So if any of you have a dad that's like six foot, this is even their wingspan. So we're talking arm, you know, hand to hand when you stretch your arms out. Its wingspan is eight feet. So this is a really large bird. So no wonder our founding fathers picked this bird as the national symbol. Now, um, so it does hunt its prey from the sky, like I said. Bald eagles, unfortunately, you know, for a long time, you could only see bald eagles in places like um, Alaska, Canada, because for a long time, bald eagles numbers were declining, especially in the 60s. DDT, which is a pesticide, was being used to kill, um, you know, bugs and things that you didn't want messing with your crops. So, DDT um, was poisoning lots of the waters and um, grasses around and it affected a lot of birds and it really affected the bald eagle so what would happen is the fish would get poisoned by the DDT but they wouldn't die from it and then the bald eagle would come and hunt the fish and that pesticide what happens is it accumulates in that prey's body in the fish's body it's called bioaccumulation I know that's a big word but it means that there's a buildup of that pesticide and when the eagle would eat it it um, it would get a worse dose of that. So what would happen, it would lay very weak eggs. And when the mom would go to sit on the eggs, they would be crushed. So their numbers went down really badly. So in 1972, DDT was banned. And since that time, eagles have come back exponentially. It's been amazing actually, with all of the work that humans have done to bring them back. Um, they've been reintroduced, re there's been reintroduction programs. Um, and the DDT has been banned. So U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service has now taken them from an endangered species to least concern. So that means their numbers are doing really well. Um, so in Ohio, we have 707 bald eagles nests now in Ohio, five in Clark County. That's a 151% increase from 2012, which was the last census. There were only 281 nests then. So these guys have done phenomenal. And it comes down to people making better choices and us not using dangerous chemicals like we did before. Um, in 1979, when this was pretty bad, there were only four nests in Ohio. So now 707 nests is amazing. A lot of that information come, came from citizen scientists which are people that go out and do censuses on their own. Like at the park, we do a butterfly survey. And that data goes to a national database so that we can see how species are doing. So a lot of this information came from citizen scientists, just regular people going out and looking for bald eagle nests. Um, we have nests in 85 of the 88 counties in Ohio. So it's pretty amazing what this guy has done to come back from the brink, from almost disappearing to coming back like he did. And that that means that we made better choices that we made some decisions to help this guy out. So he's pretty happy about that. All right, so even now in Ohio, you can see bald eagles. You just have to look, and we do get them over here at George Rogers Clark Park flying overhead. So it's pretty cool. We have a couple nests nearby. Now, for your craft today, you're gonna make a bald eagle. Not gonna be this big, but this is what you're going to make. And I'm going to take the camera now. Okay, so you are going to make this guy right here. All right, so this is our bald eagle we're going to make. I'm gonna put the camera back. It's called low key technology here. Okay, so we're gonna make this guy and all you need, you need your hands, okay? You need some paper, you need our template. 
So if you go on our website, I think the library has it available as well. You need this template to print out, or you can just look at the picture and draw it yourself, okay? So you're gonna cut out the head, the body, the beak, and these are gonna be your little feet, the end of your feet, okay? Now you can do this with white, you can do your handprint with your white paper or brown paper and just color it. So what I did is I used mostly, um, on our supply list, I have all these different colors of paper, but what I did is I just used mostly white paper. You can do the same thing for your handprint. So you're gonna have to trace your hands, cut out each part, and then all I did was I taped them together, okay? And on my supply list, I have googly eyes, which would look really cool, but most of you aren't gonna have those, so I just made eyes right here, and I made mine a female. Now, most of the time, feet, when you see eagles in the wild, the larger eagles are going to be the females, and the smaller ones are the males. Other than that, they look pretty much alike. So this is your craft today. Super easy. I didn't go through the steps because I didn't think I really needed to go through the steps for this guy, but make sure you try to make him. He was super easy. It took me about 10 minutes, and you guys could do an even better job than I can, I'm sure. I'm not the best at crafts. Okay, so... This is your supplies. I put them all in a little container. You need markers or different colored paper, pencil, scissors, and tape. So very easy supplies. If you have googly eyes, you can use them. If not, you can just draw your eyes on. Get creative. It's your eagle, okay? You can make it how you want it. And this is really great with the 4th of July coming up, which is our national holiday, and the eagle being our national symbol. This would be a fun thing to make this weekend. Now, um, what I would like you to do is to comment on our Facebook page after you watch this. Make sure you get on our Facebook page on the, the Clark County Park District's Facebook page. Make a comment like, oh, that was fun, or hi, or whatever. Just appropriate comments. Just send me a line, and then I will pick a winner for our little bald eagle here with our flag. He's our little prize for watching this video make a comment. I'd love it if you put down something that you learned. That would be fabulous. You can win this guy from the park. Now, for the library, you need your magic word for your summer reading program, right? So the magic word today is majestic, okay? The bald eagle is very majestic, a beautiful bird, and I hope that you can get outside and see this majestic bird for yourself. Make your craft with your mom or dad or your brother and sister. Have fun and hopefully you learned a lot about the bald eagle today. So remember to look for raptors in the sky around your house. Hope it'd be cool if you had a bald eagle, but there's red-tailed hawks a lot of times, Cooper's hawks, kestrels. These are different birds that you can see outside in your own yard. All right, that's it for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching today. Bye-bye.